If you have ever walked into a conference room and interacted with the control panel on the wall, you might have been amazed like I was. The realization that pushing the on button raises the curtains, lowers the projector screens and the projectors, while also turning on the projectors, I mean, if enough money is spent, an insane amount of automation can happen just by turning on the system. My church is in desperate need of a system like this to manage the sound and video in our multi-purpose rooms. A little over one year ago, I joined the staff team at this church, and these rooms have been a huge pain because of the antiquated VGA-based system that is currently installed. VGA, it had its day, but is now a thing of the past. The VGA infrastructure we have is not compatible with HD screens, and it's just time to get rid of it. If it worked, I really wouldn't complain, like honest. Like if it worked, I would just be happy and wouldn't even make this video. But every time we use it, we have to follow this printed sheet and rescan the inputs. Like just imagine trying to get an older person to do that. This brings me to the worst of all statement about our system that as it currently exists. It's not a system that young people can intuitively use. Think about that, the problems behind that. If a young person can't intuitively use it, it must not be easy. And then how is an older person that doesn't understand technology supposed to use it? I want a young person to be able to figure it out, but with a minute of training, be able to use it. And for an older person with five minutes of training, be able to use it and operate it without calling me. For example, I have been doing research into these conference style systems and Crestron and QSIS are the two systems that stand out. But after several months of getting quotes for a QSIS system, I, want, I like QSIS because it's user friendly and people can actually manage it like me versus having to be a programmer with Crestron, I think that's what it's called, to actually be able to make changes and things. Technically, we wouldn't own the software for the Crestron system, just the hardware unless we, so if we stop pay, you know, it's a whole thing. Anyways, QSIS seems like a fantastic system. I've gotten some demos and I've gotten some quotes, but if we spend $34,000 on a QSIS system, we're not gonna be able to spend that money in other areas of the church, such as, I don't know, upgrading our live stream cameras. <laughs> oh boy, okay, that's a topic for a different day. The QSIS system would be great, but the more I learned, the more I wondered, could I design a similar system? Hi everybody, my name is Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs. My focus on YouTube and in the one-on-one -on -one training that I do with churches is simple. I train and educate leaders to do church and event production with excellence. ProPresenter, X32, M32, live streaming, all that kind of fun stuff. I love to build systems like this one here. So subscribe to follow along and to see my future content. Because a word of warning, this system is not complete, but I really think there's a good chance that it will happen. So follow for part two. With all the spoilers out of the way, I have designed a new system for our space. And here are the parts I'm gonna be using. Do you recognize some of the pieces? I'm gonna be using Stream Deck controllers, with BitFocus Companion to be the backbone of the new system. I'm gonna use an ATEM switcher and I'm gonna use an X32 rack, things that I can control from the Stream Deck. So we're gonna dive into that in a minute. I'm confident that these tools are gonna to allow us to create a fantastic system that allows us to control every aspect of these rooms, starting with the easy to use Stream Deck wall panels. So let's take a look. If you are not familiar, this is a Stream Deck XL. Each unit has 32 buttons arranged in a four by eight configuration. It connects to a computer via USB-C and is basically a glorified keyboard. Glorified because each key, each button can be programmed to do virtually any imaginable task. And each button has a display that is 72 by 72 pixels. So text, images, can be displayed on the buttons, making Stream Decks a fantastic tool. As a part of this new system, I propose that we mount a Stream Deck in each of our multi-purpose rooms, L41, 42, and 43. This way, when a user walks in, they can turn to the controller and make all the changes they're gonna need to configure the room to do what they want it to do. Configuration one is when we open up the two walls and it turns the three rooms into one large room. 
in this configuration, we need to send content from the central room to the projectors in all three rooms. We also want the audio from the center room to be mixed into all three rooms. There are ceiling speakers currently installed and I'm not planning on getting rid of those. They're not good, but for speaking, they're fine. And when we do things like the well, our college ministry in there, we bring in speakers. And if we're gonna do a worship night, we'll bring in speakers. Configuration two or B, turns each of the three rooms into a conference style classroom where teachers might need anything from the projector connected from their laptop, a DVD player, a connected computer audio input, and a microphone. The Stream Deck controllers would be mounted on the wall at the entrance of each room. Like I said, a 3D printed case would house the Stream Deck, as well as the Raspberry Pi computer that allows the Stream Deck to operate without a traditional computer to run the control software. The enclosure would also need access to power and then it would connect to the building's Wi-Fi for control of the system. So this is the master homepage of the system. Each Stream Deck will show this and from here we can first power the system on and off with the buttons. I plan to power the whole system on and off using a Furman. This device is a relay that can be triggered on and off with an Arduino microcontroller via the Stream Deck. There are several ways to do this. The on and off buttons on the master home page could be used to turn the system on and off, but then if someone leaves one of the rooms and turns the system off while there's still people in one of the other rooms, well, we need to prevent that. So it could be that you need to turn off all three panels for the system to turn off. Then turning one panel off would not turn the whole system off. The whole system could also be set to turn off by default at a certain time every day if it gets left on, such as midnight. The next question for a user walking into this space is going to be, well, what rooms are you going to be using? I've learned that the QSYS system has the option for a laser module that tells the system if the wall is open or not. I could probably build a laser connected to a microcontroller and point it at the walls. You know, the walls that we open and close, turning the three rooms into one big room. If the laser beam stops at a specific distance, then the system knows that it should be in individual mode. And if the beam goes further than the program distance, then it would tell the computer, hey, the wall is open. I think this is super cool. I don't think the system would say that last part, but it would probably think it. With the laser checking to see if the wall is open or closed or not, we could actually skip the master home screen, which allows you to walk into a room and then see the controls for that room immediately. The controller in each room would be default to show you the room home screen instead of the master home screen. Unless the laser says the wall is open, which means each control panel will show the all home screen, meaning the walls are open and the rooms become one. This brings us, let's say we're walking into L41, the first room, because we're going to be leading a Bible study. We're going to go ahead and push any button on the system to wake it up. We either need to click L41, or if we do the laser, then the L41 home screen might show by default. The panel wakes up and the L41 home screen comes to life, showing us the system has been turned on. On the first column on the left, we have several settings. We can switch between the audio and video pages. We can go back to the master home page to change the system mode. With another button, we can even reset this current page back to its defaults. This way, if there is an issue with a change that we made, we can just set the whole page back to its default settings. The middle two buttons on the settings column are going to take us to the video page and back to the audio page for this room. I've removed the current page so that we can only go to the other page, the video or audio page. These settings are the same across the audio and video pages for all three rooms. On the audio page, which is where we are at now, we can control the audio inputs and audio sources that are available. We can turn the volumes up, the volumes down on any source, as well as mute the input of the source. Pushing the video button takes us to the video page where we can see and select what source goes to the projector for each room. I'm going to push back home and go over to L42, then click on the video page. This room is special. I said that all three rooms were the same, but the middle room is special because there is a TV mounted on the wall in the back that we use as a stage display screen from ProPresenter. That is why this page also has the TV, which we can use the Stream Deck to choose any source that we're sending to it. 
which makes it perfect for a presentation because now whatever's on the front screen is now on the back screen, which is actually the default setup for this configuration in this room. So as much as possible, rooms will have default settings when the initial mode is selected or when the room is turned on. For example, L42 by default is gonna be set up so that the Mac mini computer in L42 goes to the projector and the TV. Because that computer lives in this room, that just makes sense to be the default setting. People most frequently use this computer as a source in this room and that's the way it should be. All three rooms will basically act the same way, so no matter what room you go in, it's all gonna look very familiar. One good example of flexibility in this system is the reality that sometimes we want to live stream from these rooms, but we just don't really have the capacity to do that. In the future, once we have replaced and removed our PTZ optic cameras from our gym, where we do church on Sundays, I would like to bring those cameras into this room, mount them on the walls, and then wire them into this system to make them available to record and live stream events from in here. So I already set this up on the all video page. I will add a third row called live stream page. This is a button that takes you to a more advanced camera control page. This camera control page is great, but it's more advanced. So just like the other buttons that allow you to select what source goes to the projector and TV, the four cameras can be selected as the source to feed the output to the streaming encoder or recorders. The final button is projector feed, and the goal here is that whatever source has been selected and is going to the projector output, that same source can be shown on the stream output. Now, instead of having all those buttons displayed again for the stream, the graphics can be selected from one button, all from this page that makes it super easy to cut between the four cameras and graphics, making a nice live stream. I will set up a default preset position for each camera. So when full room mode is activated, each camera will go to those preset positions. The focus will be set and locked so that the camera is usable because focus and motion is one of the big issues we have with them in our main service. When a user like myself wants more control, I can go ahead and click on the live stream page. This opens the page that gives us more functionality of the cameras. The first column is our settings, but on the second column of buttons, I can select any of the cameras and I can push them to cut. At any point, we can use the network connected joystick controller to control the cameras. But on this page, we have three preset positions for each of these cameras. Then on the last column, we have some graphic sources that we can cut to. This integration will be fantastic in allowing us to live stream an event in these rooms, such as funerals, a class, or some of the other things that we do here, such as our Ash Wednesday service. Adding a HyperDeck Studio recorder to this system, we could set up an auto sync to auto sync the files to Google Drive, and then users could have access to the event once the recording is over. The more I thought about this project, the more interested and the more excited I am. So if this project interests you, then leave a comment. I'm hoping to get approval and then present part two of this video to document the challenges of implementing this system. Maybe leave a comment if you wanna see a live stream of the building process. If you have like a bunch of hours to watch me tinkering and moving things around, I don't know. If you have a similar space and would like a system like this for your church, then send me an email. Maybe we can get this approved at your church and I can build it for you before I actually get it approved in my church. As always, my email address is in the description. If you'd like to sign up for a training session, book that on my website, also link in the description. Subscribe because I'm sure part three would come just a few months after part two that would allow us to have an, another update of how we've deployed the system, how it's going, maybe I'll train some people that were previously struggling on the system for the video. Well, anyways, have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for watching this video. See you next time, bye.